Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. I am finally sharing with you guys my master bedroom makeover. I have been promising this video on my channel for several weeks now and I am finally excited to share all of the updates. So definitely be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy these makeover videos and subscribe if you're new. I would love to have you. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you guys love before and afters, then you are absolutely going to love this video because the beginning does not start out very glamorous at all. There was some major damage to the drywall tape in my bedroom, basically along the entire back wall of the room. And rather than hiring a drywall person to come in and take care of it, Jack and I, as true DIYers, decided to tackle this mess ourselves. And let me tell you, this was not only one of the hardest DIY projects that we did, I also think it turned out the best and was the most satisfying. So the first thing that we had to do was take out all of the old drywall tape and this was a giant mess and if you're thinking about doing any kind of drywall work in your house, definitely make sure you're laying down lots of tarps. I taped the tarps to the baseboards and everything to protect the carpet. Honestly, the mess afterwards was insane and I feel like we were inhaling drywall dust for weeks after we did this project. But once we took all the tape down, we had to go around the corners and vacuum and wipe everything down. So we vacuumed with the shop vac and I will have this shop vac linked down below. I used it in my recent video where I cleaned out my car and we love this vacuum so much. It is amazing. And so we just went around and vacuumed all the corners out and then I just took a microfiber and kind of wiped everything down before I went ahead and got started with spackling. So the way you put drywall tape in is you have to put a thin layer of mud up first kind of for the tape to stick. You can buy self-adhesive tape. I would make sure you do all of your research on which method you wanna do before you do it. But we wanted to use the non-self-adhesive kind, so I put a very thin layer of mud down on the wall first, and then you'll see us in just a minute go through and put the tape down, and then at least two or three layers of mud on top of it. So all in all, this was about a four to five day project just for the drywall taping. And honestly, if you don't have that kind of time, then hiring a drywaller might be the way to go. But we had the time and we wanted to take on the challenge and I cannot even imagine how many hundreds of dollars I saved by doing this. So if this is some kind of repair that you need to do in your house, I hope this helps you. I will also say that YouTube is full of amazing videos on how to do almost any DIY project like this that you could possibly want to do. I feel like I make videos all the time on things that sometimes I feel like people won't watch this. People don't want to see me decorating or cleaning my house, but honestly guys, people want to see all kinds of content and we watch so many YouTube videos on how to do every single project that we've done in this house before we did it. So definitely don't think that we just grab grabbed all the tools that we needed and got started. We did so many hours of research and watching videos before we tackled any of these projects. And with just a little bit of time and effort, it's really, really fun to learn a new skill. And I feel like we are just so much more experienced and handy now that we've done this. I'm going to be doing a full walkthrough at the end of this video so you guys can see what the room looks like completely finished. So definitely make sure that you stick around till the end of the video. You are not going to want to miss this transformation. It's truly incredible. <laughs> So 
So I did the majority of the spackling and then we kind of took turns trading off between sanding because there was a ton of drywall dust and again we used to shop back the entire time so here I'm sanding and Jack is holding the vacuum and then we kind of switched off um, as we went along the entire length of the wall and then I'm just kind of wiping everything down again this was just like the same process over and over again sand vacuum wipe repeat <laughs> add more spackle you get the idea but this was such a fun project actually just because watching the transformation as time goes on and it's really fun watching the footage back because in the moment I was so frustrated and tired but now that I'm seeing it play back in like super fast speed I am so happy with how this turned out. This was the last little bit of sanding that we had to do and then we were pretty much finished and if you guys are wondering what some of those paint swatches on the wall are we just threw a bunch of different paint colors up on the wall that I was thinking about using for this room and I ended up not going with any of those paint colors this room just is way too dark to do anything other than white and I have dark carpet and I knew I had a few pieces of dark furniture so I went with white and you will see in just a minute how I get started on taping and and painting and finally making this room nice and crisp and clean. Let me know down in the comments, are you someone who enjoys taping when you are painting or do you prefer to be the one to do the painting? I definitely find that when I was growing up, my mom was the one who always liked taping and was good at it and my dad was always the one who liked painting and was really good at it and I kind of feel like that's how Jack and I are a little bit. He really enjoys painting and I actually kind of enjoy taping. I don't know if it's like the OCD in me, but we had to tape the ceiling, we had to tape around all of the trim and everything even though I was going with white I wasn't sure if the ceiling paint and the white paint that I wanted on the walls were exactly the same color so I just went ahead and taped the ceiling up anyway I would say the ceiling probably takes the longest just because you want those lines to be super crisp and you want the tape to be really straight So I decided to skip the painting in the video because if you have watched any of my home reno videos before then you've seen me paint a thousand times. I'll link some of those videos down below so you can go check them out. But I wanted to mount my TV up on the wall and I actually made a switch. I moved the bigger TV from the living room up here to my bedroom and the smaller one downstairs just kind of fit the spaces better to swap them out. But Jack and I had ni neither one of us had ever mounted a TV before so this was quite a process. Definitely make sure if you're thinking about mounting a TV you go and get the kit from Home Depot or Lowe's. Don't just shove the wires behind the wall. We didn't really know if there was like a specific way to do it but Again, research and research and research again. And so we got this kit from Home Depot and went together pretty easily, but the hardest part was definitely getting all of those wires and all of the sockets plugged in and everything. So we finally made it work. <laughs> Thank you. 
you're gonna see a couple of new pieces of furniture going into my bedroom and the first piece of furniture is a new bed so this one is from Wayfair and I will have it linked down below you just never know when you're buying things online what the quality is going to be but as we were unboxing everything I was pretty impressed with the color and the quality and it went together pretty easily no complaints here So the last thing that we put together was a new dresser. I moved the one that was upstairs in my room already downstairs into the guest room and then we put this one together and this is also from Wayfair. Super easy to put together, really nice quality and I'm going to be eventually doing a full house tour so you can kind of see a little bit of the changes I've made in each room. So if that is something that you would like to see, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. All right, so I'm gonna walk you guys through where everything is from now that the room is pretty much finished. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about plans here in just a second, but I will try my best to tell you where everything is from and if it is still available, I will link everything down below. If I forget, then just let me know. There are a few things that I can't link because they're no longer available. But let's start with the bed first. So this is what you see right when you walk in the door and you guys saw Jack and I putting this bed together. And the reason that I opted for a bed instead of just a headboard is because when I was looking on Wayfair, I told myself if I could find a full bed for the same price as just a headboard, I was just gonna go ahead and get the full bed. So let me come over here to show you what the side of the bed looks like. So it was pretty easy to put together and it is upholstered and I was not a really big fan of the studs. I'll get up closer so you can see like the studs. I was not really a big fan of this look, um, but I kind of changed my mind. I think that it looks actually pretty nice, so I'm kind of into it. And yeah, it was not that expensive and it is still available, so I'll have the bed link down below. Um, I get a lot of questions about where my bedding is from. So the duvet cover and the duvet is from Ikea. And I originally had the duvet cover that matches these pillows right here, but it just did not really go with the curtains. So I took it off and just put the plain white duvet cover on the blanket here. I just have it because of the kitten. Um, sometimes she'll run up here and run on the bed and stuff and I don't want her to like make a mess of the white cover. So I just throw a little blanket on it uh, most of the time and that works perfectly fine. Most of my bedding, sheets, pillowcases, and everything are from Amazon, and I'll have that linked because Amazon has great sheet sets. Also, Home Goods, if you guys haven't checked out Home Goods before. I can't remember where this blessed pillow is from. I almost want to say that's a Home Goods find, too. I just threw that on the bed for some added Thanksgiving fall decor, and then I put Josie's little bed here at the end with some of her toys in it um, just for her to play with. But yeah, that's where the bed is from. It wasn't that bad to put together. It wasn't that expensive. Pretty impressed. My goal is to find eventually another bench to put here. If you guys have seen any of my other videos, 
with my old bed stuff in here, my old uh, furniture that I moved down to the guest room. Um, I had a headboard and I had a bench and instead I wanted to upgrade for the bed and get a new bench. And I'm thinking I want something either patterned or in a fun color. So we'll just kind of see, I'm keeping my eyes peeled and I'm not really in a rush for that, but it just gives, it would give some really good extra storage. Okay, so let's talk about these nightstands and the lamp and everything. So the lamp, is a super old hand-me-down. They used to be the nightstands that my parents, or the, sorry, the lamps that my parents had on their nightstands when I was growing up. And then my mom just passed them down to me and I replaced the lampshades. The other lampshades that went with them were really outdated. So I just got plain, these plain white lampshades were from Target. And what's really funny is this shape, this ginger jar shape is really coming back in style, which I think is so funny. Um, so they actually kind of fit. Um, but I would love to get new ones that kind of fit maybe more of what my style is. I don't really love the ginger jar look, but I know that it's something that's really popular right now. So they work and um, really, really inexpensive just to get new lampshades. If you have lampshades that you're just not in love with, change them out and it can just really redo um, your whole space. And then I wish I could link these bedside tables for you guys, but I got them a few years ago from Wayfair. They were another one of those I had to put together myself kind of things. And they were not that expensive. They are real wood, but they're not, I try my best to get real wood things, but they're not like crazy high quality real wood. I don't want to cheap out and get particle board stuff, but I also cannot afford crazy expensive types of wood furniture. So this is pretty heavy duty, but I would say that, you know, you could definitely get something more solid, but it works for me. It works for what I, I need. And then I have, to, obviously I have two of them and I just really like how I was nervous about the gray and the gray matching. Doesn't really bother me. Honestly, gray carpet. I, I thought for some reason I was not going to like all the different tones, but surprisingly I really do. And I think it looks really put together and I think they look like they're meant to go together, but I wish I could link those for you guys. And then let's move on to the curtains because these I am just in love with. So the curtain rods and the curtain panels are both from Target. Right now I just have the paper shades still on the windows. At some point I will invest in some really nice blinds, but paper shades work for right now. And then the curtains just kind of dress up the windows a little bit. So I'll get closer so you can see the rod. This rod is metal, but it looks like a distressed wood. So it looks like it it looks like it's wood because it's white and it's distressed on the end. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's actually metal and I just love them. I think they look so nice. And then these curtain panels are just super feminine and really pretty. And they also had them in pink. So if you guys are into pink, then they had the exact same pattern just in pink instead of blue. But I love these and I love, um, I love how feminine they are. And they don't really touch the ground. We tried our best when we hung them up to make sure that they were at the right height. All right, so I'm gonna step back over here to kind of show you the unfinished half of the room because I wanna to talk to you guys about my plans and get your get y'all's opinion. So right now, the only thing I have over here is a couple of toys for Josie and that is basically it. I've got a hamper in the corner. I would love for the hamper in the bedroom to disappear, go away and put the hamper downstairs in the laundry room so I don't have to have one up here in the bedroom. And my plan for this room, I think, is to put a full length mirror here in the corner for me to do like getting ready and hair or whatever I need to do, get dressed, check my outfit kind of thing. I want like a big full length mirror here in the corner. And then on this wall, I have a mirror that I'm going to chalk paint and then I want to get a vanity for underneath it so that I have like an area to do my makeup and stuff like that. And I want to put that on this wall. I don't know how permanent that will be. I just think it's a really good idea. I also toyed for a while with putting that in my office instead of in the bedroom, but we're going to try the bedroom first and, and see how that works. But there's not a whole lot I can do here because of the attic access door. So that will just stay as is. And if you guys remember, if you've seen my previous video where I did my closet, <laughs> I guess, clean out and organization, it has since then just turned into an absolute hot mess again. So let me know in the comments if you guys would like me to do an updated closet clean out and organization because I'm going to have to do it regardless. So if y'all want me to film that, let me know and I'll tackle that. 
And then let's turn over here so you guys can see this side of the room. I recently hung this little guy up here uh, for Thanksgiving. And then this is probably my favorite spot right now in the room just because I had such a vision for this space here and it turned out almost exactly how I had seen it in my mind. So you guys saw us hanging up the TV and I just think, yes, it's really big on the wall, but honestly, when you see the distance between the TV and where you sit in bed, it's pretty far away. So it's not really that big of a deal um, that it's such a big TV. It just, you know, works for me. And then I love this dresser. So this dresser is new and it is from Wayfair. Like I said, um, we put it together and you just saw all of that. It was so easy to put together. It's actually really funny. We were listening to or reading the reviews on it and everybody was saying it was so hard to put together. And we were like, what? It was not that, it was really not that difficult to put together. It is solid wood and such a funny story now that I have this assembled, I can show you guys. This style, like if you look at the legs, and if you look at the top of the dresser, like this little detail right here, it has like little notches in the wood. So when we were putting this together, I noticed that it looks exactly like these nightstands. It literally has the same etching in the top of the nightstand and it has the same style of leg, the exact same. The knobs are different. Those are like a gunmetal, and then these are just like a solid matte black. But honestly, I didn't plan that. I just thought that this dresser would look really nice with the nightstands, and I opted for white because I did not want to deal with the fact that the gray probably would not perfectly match the gray of the nightstands. So I opted for white, and I thought it would give like a really bright pop on this wall and a good contrast with the TV, which I absolutely think that it does. And it was just an extra bonus that I think those pieces of furniture look like they're meant to go together. And that was completely unintentional. But anyway, um, this is a six drawer dresser and you probably saw, let's see, I'll show you my sock drawer. <laughs> you guys probably saw when I, we were putting it together that, um, the drawers are not crazy deep, but they do have like a locking mechanism. So you can't pull the drawer out any further. So it is a little bit hard to get to things in the back because there's probably like a good three inches that you have to you know, like reach back there and you can't see, but that doesn't really bother me. I guess if that bothers you, then maybe this wouldn't be the dresser that you want. They're not a soft close, but not a big deal. I just really love the way that this looks and the distress, not like distress, but the, you know, the grains, the lines and everything. And it just looks really farmhouse and super cute. So then you um, may have seen, if you didn't, I will uh, link the video down below where I decorated up here because after we put it together, I just felt like it needed some, you know, things on top of it to make it look cute. So I did a little lantern here with some pumpkins in it and a little candle. And then we actually hooked up the uh, Blu-ray player because downstairs um, I have the PlayStation plugged into the TV downstairs so we could watch Blu-ray like movies and things. But of course, watching movies up here would be really difficult without some kind of device. So plugged in and attached the Blu-ray player here and it just sits in the middle. And then over here on the side, I just have a little fall foliage, some orange books, a couple little pumpkins, and that's basically it. And I was a little bit worried at the about the height of this dresser um, because I measured and I was like, oh man, it's gonna sit so low underneath the TV. I don't think it does anymore at all. I, I guess I'm just really bad with spatial awareness. I thought it was gonna be like way shorter below the TV, but I think you want a good distance between where the top of your dresser is and the TV in case you wanna put stuff on it or decorate. I just think it's absolutely perfect. I'm totally in love with it. That's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and make sure you're subscribed to my channel and I'll see you guys again really soon with a brand new video. Bye guys. Oh,